Yeah, we're, we're excited that the uh, season's opening up this Thursday, especially because we just got this cold front. So we're excited to get on a plane. We'll be leaving here on Wednesday, headed down to Tallahassee. Um, I think it's, you know, we're expecting another good year for the Wildcats. Uh, each year that we have been in Lexington, this staff has been in Lexington, the team that we have has has surpassed other um, goals that we had not hit on the previous year. So we're excited for another good season. Uh, we have a really strong team coming back. We, uh, we are coming back completely up the middle. We have our catcher back. We have um, our starting pitcher back along with another uh, couple of returning pitchers who are sophomores. We have our shortstop, our second baseman acquired a lot of time last year in our center field. So anytime you have the um, middle of your team coming back, you're, you're always looking forward to another great season. Um, I think that last year, um, hitting the Women's College World Series is obviously the pinnacle for, for college softball. It, it was great for us to be able to get the experience in that venue. We've been in Supers three out of the last four years. To, so to be able to take that next step to, to the um, to become one of the elite programs was obviously big for the University of Kentucky. We're now entering a time where softball is one of the most popular sports in the spring on TV, so it's nice to be able to have a team in Lexington that wears blue and white that will get a lot of national coverage as soon as basketball's over, because we all know basketball's king in Kentucky. So we're, we're looking forward to being on TV a lot. We're looking forward to the team that we're putting on the field. Um, about it. Although you called Coach Himes an assistant coach, and she's not going to like that when she sees this press conference. So <laughs> she's actually my associate head coach. We return her. She's our offensive coach. Molly Johnson Belcher. She she also returns with me. So we're we're pretty much intact moving forward to 2015. When you make a run like last year and go to the World Series, I don't want to say the offseason is easy, but was it easier to motivate your team once they know that feeling, what it's like to go that far? <sighs> Well, we've never had a motivation problem um, with our softball team. We, we have great team culture. We're motivated in everything we do. We're incredibly strong pound for pound. We've always been exceptional students. Last year, our team GPA was a 3.6. We were the only BCS school in the country that was both in the World Series and top 10. So motivation has never been um, an issue with us. But the, the thing that was different in our off season is that what our team worked on was a little bit more focused. I think when you have a number of players who get the experience of being in the World Series, all they want to do is return. So I think when, when you're doing those 6 a.m. workouts in the summer and they're all voluntary so they don't have to be there, when, you, when you're doing those extra cuts in the batting cages, your focus tends to be a little more centered and, and um, I think it's been a lot more productive. Right now, I would say that we're a lot further along this point in the season than we have been in, in past years, mostly because of the experience and the focus that our players had in the off season. So they came back, they came back, um, their swings were a little bit better. They were a little bit stronger. And we're doing things right now that we hadn't done at this point in time in the past. In the immediate aftermath of the World Series, did you have any fears that complacency could there could be any of that? Or or no, no, complacency isn't. When you come to the University of Kentucky, your goal is to win championships. So there's uh, that carrot is always dangling out there. And even if you win one championship, you want to win another championship. So complacency isn't something that we um, that we worry about. I think moving forward, we we've entered uncharted waters, and it's something something that this team is going to have to manage is is the expectations of of being the team that people are going after. In the past, we've always been a good team, but we've always kind of been underneath the radar. Now we're, we're a target. People are going to be coming after us, and we're going to have to bring our A game every game, and, and that's something new, and that's a challenge that I think that this team is looking forward to. Speaking of expectations, Kelsey comes in with a ton of expectations. How mm -hmm. do you Well, I don't expect more out of Kelsey. She's handled everything fine. She's incredibly strong. She she worked. She also worked hard in the off season. She's developing more pitches. Uh, she's done great in the classroom. She's done everything we've expected for her. To expect her to win more than 30 games is a, is kind of a tall order. The the biggest challenge is going to be we have two returning sophomores and we have a freshman in the pitching staff. For so, what we've more been focusing on is developing a complete staff, developing um, additional starters. We've been putting people in different. Roles, closing roles. Relieving roles isn't as much of an issue for us as it is for baseball because we only play the seven innings, but I'm confident if, if people were put in that position that they've been trained for it. So it's not so much what Kelsey can do, it's more about the development of the, the rest of the staff and making sure that we can all pitch in in the, in the postseason. What does it do for you as a whole when you know you have someone that can go out and beat anybody on any given day? 
Well, it's tempting. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, one advantage that softball has is that your pitcher, your starting pitcher, can pitch more than, let's say, in baseball. So it's very tempting to put out, out there every single game, but you don't want to burn them out in the in, during the season. So you have to make sure you develop a staff so you can make a, a, a big run in the postseason. But what it does is more than anything right now having Kelsey on the staff is it gives the rest of the staff experience that they need because they've seen Kelsey go through the postseason they've seen her going supers they've now seen a, her carry our team in the World Series so what they've been able to do is learn from what her successes are and I think what's happened is the learning curve in our other three pitches has accelerated so I think that's been the biggest um, biggest role that Kelsey's played this offseason. Rachel you talked about a little bit of focus in the regular season because they're so anxious to get back to the postseason. It's quite a grind, and they've been through it before, but... No. I think the difference with us is we have a very process-oriented team. We have a very intelligent team. So there's even though we made it to the World Series, there were a lot of statistical things that we could have improved on, um, specifically def or offensively. We could have done um, quite a bit better job. So I think the fact that we've been able to stay focused on our process-oriented goals, becoming a better team, scoring more runs, having a higher average, those things that you need um, to hopefully bring home the championship. So I think our ability to focus on those goals has allowed us to become a better team so I think they understand if we can get better at those things we have a shot at winning the championship which again is the ultimate goal when you come to the University of Kentucky. Is that the biggest challenge offensively that, that you see this team maybe the toughest thing that they're going to go through this year is focusing on improving the offense? No I think the, the I think the two challenges are making sure that we have a a big bullpen making sure that we have more arms and then in addition to that having the offense that can support that support the pitching staff while the season is going on. In order to give pitchers experience, you need to have an offense that scores a lot of runs. If you don't score a lot of runs, you have to use Kelsey more than you would like to because at the end of the day, you have to not only have a high RPI, you have to have above a 500 record. And the SEC is by far the best softball conference in the country if you take into consideration how strong the teams are from top to bottom. So all of those things are going on at the same time. So assuming that we have the offense um, that can support our pitching staff will be a very, will will be a team to reckon with. Right off the gate, you start with a month first one, but start with Florida State. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because it's a good measuring stick to see how far you are. The fact that we're not only playing Florida State Saturday and Sunday, but we have two additional games against Georgia Southern. So you can't use the same pitcher the entire time. So you're facing a lot of things when you face Florida State. They're, they're an excellent program. They're, they're a program rich in tradition. We're also facing them in their home environment. So I think what it is is a good measuring stick to see how much we've improved since last year. They have an outstanding pitching staff. They don't have only one pitcher. They have two great pitchers. So I think it, it'll be a good measure of where we're at and it'll give us an idea of what we need to work on moving forward for the rest of the season. Well, everything about the World Series, once you go there, it changes your opinion about everything. Um, it changes what you know you need. You think you know what you need when you're moving towards the World Series, but once you're there, there there's a lot of other things that go on. First of all, when you're at the World Series, People in our environment, you have media day, you have your, um, all of a sudden your squad gets separated out, you have your starters that need to make appearances, and then you have other individuals that um, don't get to make the same experience. So the first thing you have to do, a team like ours, we have great team chemistry, and so in a situation like that, your team chemistry gets tested. So the first thing that you have to do is make everybody, everybody has to gain experience, all 17 of them. The other thing that you come to realize when you're in the World Series, softball itself has changed. Um, in the past five years, it's it's a much more offensive game, so you need a deeper pitching staff. In the past, you could you could win a lot of games with one pitcher, but but now softball is at a place where you need two or three great pitchers so that you can make a deep run in the World Series. And I think that became really apparent to people on our team. We hadn't been faced with that before, so I think now they understand. And I think finally, as a coach, I think you I think as a coach, you grow, you develop, you you have to learn how to you have to learn how to manage a lot of different things. And scouting at the World Series is very difficult because you're playing 
there's eight teams there and other than your first game you don't know who you're playing so it's very physically demanding on the coaching staff to be able to prepare your team for the next game and that's something that you have to be ready for um, before you ever get to the World Series because if not um, you're going to not only be pulling all-nighters, but if you're tired, you have, an, uh, you have a chance to make mistakes, just like the athletes are as well. So you have to make sure that your coaching staff has the experience to be competitive in the World Series, and you have to make sure that your players also have the knowledge and experience to compete at that level. And I think now that we've been there, we're going to be better prepared um, if that opportunity arises this season. Well, I think when you get to the point where fans are second-guessing decisions, that's a great thing. You know, you, you, I know that sounds funny, but, you know, so there's going to be somebody who's never turned on a softball game in their life, and they're wondering why the same pitcher is throwing hundreds of pitches at the same time because they've never seen softball. And they think that's the way you want to do things because they've never seen, seen it before. But I think at the end of the day, when you're getting second-guessed, that means people are watching. If people aren't second-guessing you, that means that they're not watching. I'm sure last night in the Super Bowl, there's a lot of second-guessing going on but the reality of it is millions of people were watching that game so the fact that we finally reached the pinnacle where people will um, criticize what I'm doing means that we finally reached the fan base of the Big Blue Nation. We have the best fans in the country and if they start watching softball games and they can continue to watch softball games I think it's better for the university as a whole it's better for the athletic department and um, I just have to have a thick enough skin to keep staying the course and, and um, figuring out how to manage that part of my job. You talked about the growing popularity of softball and mm -hmm. the fact that in the spring it's become a pop very popular on TV. What do, what do you think the reasons are for that? Well, I think there's a few reasons. Number one, softball, when played well, stays closer to two hours. When, um, when the game gets past the two-hour mark, you lose fans. So I think the fast that, fact that our game is a faster pace in terms of the amount of time it's on TV has made softball very popular. The other thing that makes softball a popular sport is that um, unlike other sports where there's a direct comparison to a male sport. So softball is very similar to baseball. So a lot of fans who don't know anything about softball, baseball is the American sport. It's a great sport to watch. But softball, because our base paths are so much shorter, it makes the game faster. So for example, the fastest softball players are getting down the line in 2.6 and 2.7 seconds. They're getting from home to one. And that amount of time, that makes the game faster. The fastest baseball players are getting there generally around 4.3 three seconds, so a little bit less than that. So the game itself, because of the dimensions of the field, make it a faster paced game. So I think those two things cater to the American population in general. So if we can keep the game fast paced and we're exciting to watch and we play a fast paced game, it's it's really fun. And then when you see it live, it's a game that when you see live, you, you tend to be hooked on it. So my one of my goals um, the entire time I've been in Lexington is to get people to come to the games because once they come, they tend to come back. Yes. You talked earlier about motivation and wanting to get back to the World Series, obviously. When you were out there, though, you had success with the team. You won. Yes. How much does that help, knowing it's, did it give you a feeling like we actually belong out here? This wasn't just an accident that we got out of here. Yes. One of my goals as a coach was to. Um, you not only want, you want to win every game you're there, but it was really important to me that we came out and we had a great showing from the get-go. A lot of teams go out to the World Series, and just because of the newness of a situation, they bust, and they bust early. So the longer we could stay in it, the better it was. It, it gave the team the pro and the program the confidence that they needed to know that, well, we fell short in these aspects, so if we continue to work hard, we have an opportunity of being one of the elite programs year in and year out. So the fact that we went out there and we did well against Louisiana Lafayette really showed that this program has come a far way in the last seven years that I've been in Lexington. You did lose some seniors. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to miss him. I mean, Lauren Cumbus was a phenomenal player for us because she gave us time on the mound. She was, she was a great first baseman, great hitter. But what made Lauren special is because she was an excellent team leader. I, I think that the culture and the identity of our team, a lot of that came from the leadership that Lauren, Lauren gave us when she was here. I think the other, the other players are going to miss too. The, the year that Emily Gaines had was, was unprecedented. I mean, there was somebody who didn't get any playing time, and all of a sudden she becomes our hero, which is just incredible to see that. That happened to a Kentucky kid. Crystal Smith was a career, you know, less than a 200 hitter, and she was one of the hottest hitters in the country during the postseason. And um, 
you know, the rest of the, the that class, I don't want to keep going on about them because they graduated. They, they meant a lot to our program because when they came here as freshmen, no class had it harder than their class. They were one of my first classes in entirety. And um, they they had to earn their way there. They didn't get a lot. A lot of them did not get a lot of playing time until their senior year. And they continued to work hard. They did great by the university. And they finished strong. So I think it's the character of the team and the, and the individuals that graduated that we're going to miss. But fortunately, they instilled such a great um, atmosphere in our program. And that's continued to go on. The team chemistry again this year and the culture of the program is still top notch. And I attribute that to, to all of the individuals that have played here. Um, um, since I've gotten to Lexington. So, Rachel, even though you've lost some good hitters, you still mm -hmm. are optimistic you're going to have a good offensive team? I believe so. Our, you have, we had a number of starters last year were sophomores, so the experience alone, um, hopefully, if, if they learned from their experiences last year, they're going to be better. Uh, Christian Stokes is somebody who's been really impressive this season. She has great presence in the box. She's hitting the ball very hard. Silver Samuel is somebody also to watch. She she looks outstanding. She is so strong now. Um, so even though she's skinny when she runs out there, she, she is so much stronger than she was. Her commitment in the weight room has made her such an exceptional athlete. Um, and, and there's other players. Nikki Sagerman is a tremendous hitter. We have some freshmen that are dynamite that once they um, they have some experience, I think that they'll do great things. I think that Brooklyn Hines is somebody to watch, and hopefully she'll in the future um, pro provide some power in the lineup where, where we're missing out with that graduating class. I think Aaron Rethlake is, is going to prove to be one of the um, – one of the better freshmen in the country once she gains the experience and the knowledge she needs to compete at our level. So those two people alone will help, but, but just the returners to it, see what they've done offensively has been awesome this offseason. So I'm expecting that we'll have people show up and do things that none of us have seen in the uh, past.